Hey, I'm uh, Emery Stagmer, and I've got a video that a lot of people have looked at on YouTube, a couple of thousand, on an RX-7 convertible subwoofer cabinet, custom cabinet that I made for my car. And uh, so I figured I'd do a follow-up video to it and show you the video actually installed in the car and actually let you listen to the entire stereo that I put in, not only including the subwoofer, but uh, ballpunk door speakers and infinity reference speakers uh, in the headsets. So what I wanted to do is give a bit of an audio reference so that you can uh, hear exactly what I'm uh, listening to in the car. And to do that, what I did is I put together some files in my recording studio uh, that exemplify some really good stuff uh, that I have uh, files ripped directly off of CDs, uh, uncompressed WAV files. And uh, I'm going to let you listen to them as I've recorded them uh, on my studio reference monitors, uh, which you can see right here. These are uh, Mackie HR824's uh, professional studio reference monitors. And I'm playing them back on, uh, on this microphone right here. This is an Audio-Technica AT4050CM5 uh, large diaphragm mic uh, that I've actually put uh, right here in where I would normally put my head in order to listen to the reference monitors. So, uh, here's the recording that I made uh, with that microphone and these files uh, coming off that, and then we'll go out into the car and actually take the same microphone during a string alongside of, of uh, mic cables uh, out to the car and, uh, and actually let you hear what the car sounds like versus the studio reference monitors. Now, studio reference monitors are interesting because uh, they're they're uninteresting actually. They're interesting because they're uninteresting. They're flat. They have no coloring to the sound. Uh, the frequency response that they display and give back to the person who's doing mix downs is uh, very somewhat uninteresting. Uh, and so if you hear something really jump out at you in a set of studio reference monitors, that's probably the thing that you need to turn down. Uh, that's not what you want in your car. You need to overcome road noise and some other stuff, uh, hearing deficiency, and, uh, and the acoustics uh, environment uh, of the vehicle. So you tend to do some things in the car that are uh, a little more interesting than what you want in the reference monitors. But this is the cleanest audio that I could get without actually giving it to you direct. And I wanted you to hear what it came like out of a pair of really good speakers. And then we'll go out into the car and listen to it, OK? So this is kind of interesting, something I've been threatening to do for a while and hadn't actually done. I took the raw wave files and I ran them through a frequency analysis and here's the plot of the original wave files uh, as they exist on the computer sampled directly uh, and shown the frequency analysis in a logarithmic scale, which is pretty flat and they look really good. Now here is the same set of WAV files, but as recorded by the AT4050 microphone out of the studio reference monitors. So there you can see there's a little bit of drop off in the top end, and there's this little bit of scoop down here uh, in the near the bottom of the mids. But other than that, it's pretty close. So, I've been meaning to get around to this for about, I don't know, five years. This is actually my RX-7, uh, the convertible where I built the subwoofer cabinet. Uh, hanging right here is my Audio-Technica 4050. Uh, this cable actually runs, I'll show you in a second, 
up to the second floor into my recording studio so that I'm getting uh, exactly the same kind of recording that I got uh, when I was recording my studio monitors playing the exact same selection of music. I got a little something else running right now. This is um, a little Phil Keggy. But um, here, hold on. Let me give you a little tour of what's inside the car. All right, so here's the cabinet actually mounted uh, inside the compartment. Now that curve right there is where you actually have uh, the spare tire. I took it out so you can see it. You can also see the uh, amplifiers on the other side. The red amp is a uh, red and silver that you see most of is a dual four channel and then vertically mounted uh, right here is a Sony right there that actually runs over and runs the dual channels into the subwoofer. This is the subwoofer uh, port the little port that's down here and the uh, and the connection I bought is a kit along with a 10 inch little no-name subwoofer down there and it needed about a cubic foot so as you see this kind of sits in really weird uh, kind of locations here let's walk around the car if I can uh, hopefully I can get the, get the battery yeah. to seat up. so here's a little closer look at kind of the uh, the build of the subwoofer. Uh, the amplifiers are mounted in here. Uh, they're actually just sitting here, but I've had them in here for a couple of years now, and um, works great. The sound is really good. So, here is the audio that I recorded of those same four audio clips, uh, and then I'll go back up in the studio and uh, we'll show you the comparison of the of the frequency analysis. So the comparison is very interesting. Here is the audio reference monitor frequency spectrum again, and here is the audio spectrum as recorded in the car. Unless you have really, really good speakers and you're listening to this on a really good stereo, you really can't tell the difference. I had a problem telling the difference listening to the playback of the two recordings on my reference monitors, you know, with my ears. Uh, even between the recording and the um, and the originals, uh, there's a little bit less mids. Um, it actually sounds a little bit shiny in the car. That's kind of deliberate. Um, I drive it a lot with the top down, and whenever I drive with the top down, in order to help save my hearing, which is kind of shot anyway, uh, not really shot, but I have a little bit of tinnitus. I played in rock bands for years. When you want. Um, uh, I'm trying to preserve my ears, so I always drive with earplugs in, always with the top down. Um, and I drive with the stereo uh, loud, but not, you know, really, really loud. So uh, I'm, I'm super uh, happy with the way the stereo sounds in the car. It's probably the best sounding stereo I own. It probably sounds in some ways a little bit better than my reference monitors, as I said, because I want it to. Uh, I need the reference monitors to sound very flat and very uninteresting, but I want the car to sound interesting. I want it to sound shiny, and I want it to sound listenable even with the earplugs in. So, anyhow, uh, I hope you uh, appreciate the uh, the build, the the uh, subwoofer cabinet. Um, I've enjoyed the heck out of it, and uh, it's been a long time getting around to this remake. So, make sure that you go back and look at right here. There's a link to the original subwoofer cabinet video showing it to you before it was installed in the car. Thanks.